The fifth round of the 1955 Formula One World Championship held at the Zandvoort circuit in the Netherlands. Nestled among the picturesque dunes just north of Zandvoort, this track lies approximately 35 kilometers or 22 miles west of Amsterdam, offering a stunning backdrop against the North Sea. Eight days before the Dutch Grand Prix, the legendary 24 Hours of Le Mans took place in France. It was supposed to be just another thrilling installment of the legendary race, where the world's best drivers, cars and manufacturers pushed the limits of speed and endurance. But as the sun set on that summer evening in France, the race turned into the darkest chapter in motorsport history. By the mid-1950s, racing technology had advanced rapidly, with top speeds reaching over 270 kilometers per hour. But the circuit's infrastructure remained outdated, with little separation between the cars speeding past and the crowds packed along the track. Worse yet, there were no proper barriers to protect the spectators, and pit areas were positioned dangerously close to the racing line. As we reflect on the motorsport world in 1955, it is impossible to overlook the tragic event at Le Mans. However, at Grand Prix TV, our mission is to bring you the thrill and excitement of Formula One, showcasing the bravery and skill of drivers pushing the limits on the track. We understand the significance of what happened at Le Mans, but out of respect for the victims and the sensitive nature of that day, we will not be recreating or discussing the details of the accident. If you would like to learn more, we have included two separate links in the description below, where you can find in-depth information on the tragedy. Thank you for understanding, and now, let's return to what we do best, celebrating the incredible journey of motorsport. The Lancia squad, still reeling from the tragic loss of its leader Alberto Ascari, and grappling with severe financial difficulties, announces its final exit from Formula One selling all its cars to Enzo Ferrari. Alongside the vehicles, former Lancia driver Eugenio Castellotti also joins Scuderia Ferrari, a valuable addition following Nano Farina's departure from the team, as he retires from racing. Additionally, ex-team driver Mike Hawthorne makes a return to Ferrari after becoming disillusioned with his partnership with Tony Vandervel, stepping in to replace Harry Shell in the Maranello lineup. Maurice Trintignant remains with the team as the third driver, continuing his role from previous races. Alfred Neubauer, the head of the Daimler-Benz team, opts to bring the latest short wheelbase W196 to the Dutch Grand Prix. This particular car model has already proven its worth on the track, but sadly, it marks the final Formula One cars produced by Mercedes during this era. The lineup of drivers remains consistent, with the German team once again represented by Juan Manuel Fangio, Sterling Moss, and Karl Kling, continuing their pursuit of success in the championship. The Maserati team lines up with three cars for this event, piloted by Jean Berra, Luigi Musso, and Roberto Mieres. However, Cesare Perdisa, who had a disappointing outing in Belgium, is temporarily sidelined from this Grand Prix. Additionally, three more Maserati vehicles are entered by private competitors Louis Rosier, Peter Walker and Horace Gould, expanding the presence of the iconic brand on the grid. Qualifying was absolutely dominated by the Benz team, showcasing their undeniable superiority on the track. Juan Manuel Fangio once again claims pole position, posting an astonishing time of 1 minute 40, shattering the previous track record by an incredible 6.5 seconds. Sterling Moss, as always, closely trails his teammate, finishing just four tenths behind the Argentine powerhouse. Carl Kling delivers a commendable performance, securing third place and reinforcing the strength of the Silver Arrows. However, it's Luigi Musso in his Maserati who catches the eye, flying around the circuit with remarkable speed. Musso's impressive pace earns him a solid fourth place, proving that he is a formidable contender in his own right. Mike Hawthorne, making his debut in the Super Squalo, shows great confidence and secures fifth position, while John Bearer, 
Battling through the discomfort of his injured leg matches Hawthorne's time in a Maserati. As the sun rises over the picturesque dunes of Zandvoort, the atmosphere buzzes with excitement, anticipation hanging in the crisp Dutch air. The scent of freshly baked stropwafels wafts through the air, blending with the faint smell of gasoline. With the grandstands packed and the track set, the stage is ready for an unforgettable race day at Zandvoort, a true celebration of motorsport in the heart of the Netherlands. Over the course of the race, the drivers will navigate 100 laps around the Zandvoort circuit, which totals a distance of 419 kilometers. Fanjo executes a sensational start, rocketing into the first corner in the lead. However, his teammates experience a less than ideal getaway, allowing Musso to slip past both of them and secure second place. As they cross the finish line, Moss trails closely behind Musso, nearly brushing against the Maserati as they navigate the first turn. In the next corner, he makes his move, slipping past the Italian. Bera seizes an opportunity to reclaim fourth position, overtaking Kling's Mercedes with a smooth maneuver. Disaster strikes for Peter Walker, as one of the wheel bearings on his Maserati gives out, sending the car into a wild, uncontrollable skid. The vehicle spins violently, making a couple of dramatic pirouettes before finally coming to a halt on the side of the track. The Englishman is fortunate to walk away unharmed from the incident. Moss closes the gap to Fanjo, with just half a second separating the two Mercedes teammates. It's becoming increasingly clear that both drivers have been given strict team orders regarding their positions, and for this race, the Englishman is clearly assigned the role of playing second fiddle to the reigning champion. Hawthorne experiences trouble with his gearbox and is forced to make an unscheduled stop in the pits. The Ferrari mechanics work quickly to resolve the issue, but the delay proves costly. By the time Hawthorne gets back on the track, he has dropped all the way down to 12th place, losing precious time in the process. By lap 21, Roberto Mieres closes in on Carl Kling's Mercedes. Mieres is locked in, looking for the slightest gap to snatch the position away from his rival. Last season marked Kling's debut in the World Championship as a driver for the Silver Arrows, where he quickly displayed his impressive talent and speed. He narrowly missed out on victory at both the French and German Grand Prix, demonstrating that he had the potential to compete at the highest level. However, Kling's relative inexperience on several European circuits became apparent. With a significant portion of the first half of the 1955 season taking place on similarly unfamiliar tracks, it seems unlikely that he will emerge as a genuine contender for the championship. Yet, the Zandvoort circuit proves to be a challenging venue for the seasoned German driver. On the following lap, feeling the heat from Mieris, Kling pushes harder, trying to pick up the pace, but the pressure proves too much. He misjudges a corner, and in a flash, his Mercedes veers off the track, sliding helplessly into the sand. The car grinds to a halt, stuck deep in the dunes, his attempts to free the car are in vain, and the German driver is forced to abandon the race. Hawthorne clawing his way back through the pack. He overtakes Ramos and then swiftly moves past Rosier, reclaiming two crucial positions. Now sitting in ninth place, the British driver shows no signs of slowing down as he continues his charge up the field. By the time the race reaches its third stage, the two leading silver arrows of Fanjo and Moss are still running in perfect sync, maintaining a calculated pace. Their teamwork is proving unstoppable, and the gap to Musso in third has already ballooned to a commanding 17 seconds. The Italian, despite his strong performance, finds himself unable to close the ever-widening gap to the dominant Mercedes duo. 
On lap 43, Mieres, running flat out, seizes his opportunity and effortlessly overtakes his teammate Berra. The talented Argentinian makes the move look routine, claiming fourth place with ease. At the race's halfway point, the notorious Dutch weather makes its presence felt as rain begins to fall. This unexpected downpour compels the drivers to ease off the throttle, forcing them to adjust their pace and navigate the wet track with caution. During this era, race cars offer minimal grip, relying on the same tyres for all conditions. The 1950s Formula One is a different breed entirely, where drivers must navigate unpredictable circumstances and face death at every corner. This unique period demands exceptional skill and courage, highlighting the raw talent required to compete at such high speeds. By lap 53, Trintignant also catches up to Berra, who is struggling hard. With a decisive manoeuvre, Trintignant overtakes the Frenchman. Berra must have a rough race. Castellotti, in his turn, also passes him. This manoeuvre sees the Frenchman slipping down to seventh place, further highlighting his struggles on the track. On lap 66, Trintignant heads into the pits due to gearbox issues, forcing him to retire from the race and surrendering fifth place to his teammate Castellotti. By lap 85, Musso's Maserati hits a wet spot, causing him to spin out. Luckily, the Italian manages to regain control and continues without losing any positions. The two Silver Arrows once again showcase their dominant edge over the competition, crossing the finish line in quick succession and securing a second consecutive double victory for the German team. Juan Manuel Fangio clinches his third victory of the season, solidifying his lead in the championship standings. Sterling Moss, finishing in second place, emerges as Fangio's primary contender in the title race. Luigi Musso impresses with a strong performance, taking third as he finishes just behind the two silver arrows, well ahead of the rest of the field. Roberto Mieres crosses the line in fourth, earning not only three valuable points, but also an additional point for setting the fastest lap of the race, one that even the Mercedes drivers couldn't surpass. Finally, Eugenio Castellotti secures the last two points for fifth place, navigating the challenges of understeer in his Super Squalo throughout the race. Despite the difficulties, he achieves a productive finish in his first outing for Ferrari, highlighting his potential as a rising star. Following the Dutch Grand Prix, the championship standings show Juan Manuel Fangio firmly in the lead with 27 points, establishing himself as the dominant force this season. Sterling Moss sits in second place with 13 points, having gained three positions after a strong performance. However, Maurice Trintignant, currently third, seems to be losing pace and struggling to keep up with his competitors. But get ready, because next up, we venture to the iconic Aintree circuit for the British Grand Prix. Anticipate thrilling speeds, fierce competition, and the unmistakable spirit of British motorsport.